Good morning. Welcome to worship this sixth Sunday of Epiphany. Now, I know there's a lot of distractions going on, but try to focus. You can smell the pizza. We'll talk more about that after service, and there's more food over in the other building, so we'll talk about that also after service. Our our sermon, the theme this morning is, Why or What Does It Matter What We Believe? So that's our topic for our discussion And uh, we were supposed to have a baptism last night, but the family was sick, so that'll be rescheduled. Let's stand and greet one another. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we gather today for worship in the name of the triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we'll now share the peace.
God's beloved, let us come before God our Father with repentant hearts and confess our sins to him, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. For Jesus says, you are the light of the world. Light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Together we confess, God of mercy, I know that I am sinful by nature. I sin against you in what I think, say, and do, in ways that I know and in ways of which I am unaware. Lord, please forgive me for living like a false witness of, to your resurrection and for failing to testify <clears throat> Excuse me, to your resurrection. I ask for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, to forgive me for this and for all the ways in which I have done wrong against you. Upon hearing your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you, and by the command of Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The congregation may be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, graciously hear the prayers of your people, that we who justly suffer the consequences of our sin may be mercifully delivered by your name and to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen congregation may be seated. Our Old Testament reading that greets us this sixth weekend of Epiphany is from the prophet Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. 
He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream, and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green. And it is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle that greets us is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and is the basis for our sermon text this morning. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be false witnesses or misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. And Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd sought to touch him, for power came out from him, and he healed them all. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, For yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people revile you and hate you, and they will exclude you and spurn your name for evil on the account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For so their fathers did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all the people speak well of you. For so their fathers did to the false prophets. This is the gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated, and at this time we invite all the children forward for Mr. Whitney's children's message. Good morning, good morning. Oh, you're going to sit? Okay. Wow, there's a lot of you. Come on down, have a seat. Oh, excuse me. We can squish up here. Hi. Oh, you dropped your hat. You got it? Oh, all right, now we're going to fight over who gets to sit by Dad. Marion, are you going to sit? No, she's the third child. Of course not. (gasps) Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mr. Whitney. Do you know that something special is happening this week? Who, by raising their hand, can tell me what is happening this week? Uh, What do you think, Augustus? You don't know. Okay, let's go a little older. How about Augustus number two? Valentine's Day, a.k.a. get as much sugar as you can and then go home to your parents, right? Yeah, Valentine's Day. 
I have a question though. Why do we celebrate Valentine's Day? <laughs> because, nope, stage right. Why do we celebrate Valentine's Day? Presley, do you remember? All right, so there's this guy who's old and dead now, St. Valentine, and he did something. And now we have turned it into a day where we celebrate all the things that we love. So here's my, here's what I'm going to tell you. And if you agree with me, I want you to raise your hand. If you say, I love pizza, raise your hand. Well, you have to raise your hand if you love pizza. Okay. All right. Hands down. I love ice cream. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Hands down. I love broccoli. Silas, I know you don't like broccoli. Oh, how about I love taking a nap? Ah, yeah, more in the pews than up here, definitely. So Valentine's Day is the day where we celebrate the things that we love, but more importantly, we celebrate the people that we love. And we, hey, William, I need to tell you something. We celebrate a God who loves us even more. When we show love to others, we are also showing love to God. And we, and that's a great thing. Because God showed us the perfect example of love. He sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross and rise from the dead so that we can have forgiveness and we can live with him forever. And that's the greatest love that we celebrate. It's not just the love of pizza or way too many heart-shaped sugar things or taking a nap. It's the love of Jesus. And we don't celebrate that just on Valentine's Day. We celebrate that every day when we gather for worship every Sunday. And we celebrate it every day when we wake up. We say, wow, God loves me today. And that's a great thing because he loves you each and every day. So I want you tomorrow, first of all, to not eat all your candy. I want you to wake up tomorrow and tell your parents, hey, happy Valentine's Day. Jesus loves you. And then I want you to show that love of Jesus to everyone. Can you do that? Three things. Is that hard to do? That's hard to do. Okay, Timmy, it's hard for Timmy. Um, I'm not going to expect my kids to remember, but we'll try. Uh, will you please fold your hands, bow your heads, and pray with me? Dear God, we love a lot of things, but we know that you love us even more than all of that. Help us to always remember that you love us the most. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. Thanks for coming up. All right, go. As they return to the seats, I invite the congregation to please stand as we confess our love and our faith for God in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated. in peace to you in Christ. 
our subject for discussion tonight, this evening is, or this morning, is why does it matter or what does it matter what you believe? Well, it does matter what you believe and why we believe it. But our critics would say, you can't possibly believe that that old book full of fables and moral stories is about God. You can't possibly believe that that book contains the word of God or that that book is the word of God. It's not even man's opinion about God. It's just a book full of stories. Just ask Ophir Renfrew. She says, I can't believe in a God like that who's so angry, who's always zapping people. She obviously hasn't given, been given the gift of faith and read through the New Testament to see the love of Christ. She's stuck in an Old Testament God and does not see his grace in that. In fact, our critics would go on to say, how why are you so naive to believe such a crazy thing as that? Well, you're not naive and neither am I. We have been blessed with the gift of faith. And the gift of salvation. So why does it matter what we believe and what you believe? Well, I submit to you that it does matter. Case in point, what do you say to the McCloskey family who's just lost three children in a tragic fire who if Jesus hasn't been raised? How do you comfort them in the loss of three children? How do you comfort a widow or a widower whose spouse has preceded them in death if there is no resurrection? How do you comfort an adult child who's lost their mother or their father if there is no resurrection? And in fact, Jesus, according to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul, is the first fruits of the resurrection. And as Jesus was there on the cross, and his, right after he said, it is finished, and he breathed his last, bowed his head. At the moment that he died, all of the Old Testament saints in and around the place of the skull, Golgotha, where he's crucified, were came up out of the tomb and were raised, and they went into Judea and to Jerusalem and the surrounding towns and villages to testify that he was, in fact, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Paul goes on to say in the book of Romans under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that you and I have died to sin. We are dead to sin through the waters of baptism and we have been raised to new life in Christ Jesus. We are to live our lives as a holy and living sacrifice. We are to present our lives to Christ as a living sacrifice, so that when the people that you interact with outside of this family of fellowship see you, they see the light of Jesus that lives in and through you. You might be the only 30-second soundbite or the two-minute YouTube video that that person sees, or maybe if they're watching you really closely, maybe even a 30-minute or an hour-long movie. You are the only, maybe the only representation of Jesus, and you might be the only Bible, Bible that that person reads. So I agree with Mr. Whitney. Let's show people how much Jesus loves them. Let's make it our face, let's ask God to make our faces glow so much with the love of Christ that it beams through and in and out of us that people need to see sungla wear sunglasses when they're with us indoors. You know, Moses did that. He had to wear a veil when he came down from the mountaintop. This is your mountaintop experience when you come to the God's house and to worship him. To go out of this place recharged, refreshed, and renewed and ready to face whatever the world throws at you this week. Knowing that you have the hope and the peace of the resurrection. God is for you. Who can be against you? What can stand against you with God living in you? Absolutely nothing. Not death, not powers, not principalities, not rulers, not kingdoms. There is nothing that separates you from the love 
of Christ. Nothing that can defeat you in God. Death has no sting and no master over us because we have the hope of the resurrection. We have the promise of the resurrection. And in your baptisms, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is the deposit of your guarantee that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. If you can't rejoice over that, I don't know what else you can rejoice over. It doesn't matter if the Bengals or the Rams win. That's inconsequential in comparison to the joy that we have and the hope and the life of Christ in the resurrection. Let us pray that God uses us as witnesses to him so that our lives not only shine and reflect his life, that when you go to wherever it is you might be, whether it's at the school or the feed store, Wherever you might be, somebody says to you, Randy, Jason, whoever you might be, Dennis, why are you so happy? Vince, why do you have so much peace? How can you do it with the crisis in Ukraine and the winter storms and everything that's happening in the southern border and all the mess of our politics? How can you be so much at peace and so happy and content? What do you have that I don't have? Because whatever it is, I want it. And they say, well, I can't trust in God because I don't know him. Well, you're trusting in the pew to hold you right now or the chair that you're sitting in. Start there and go forward. Because everybody has some kind of faith. Even if it's just a pew or a chair is going to hold them. Everybody has a faith in something. Somewhere. Even the most staunch agnostic who refuses to admit there's a God. If you start with, well, you're sitting in that chair and you're trusting that chair to hold you. That's faith. They can't argue with that. Then lead them with the help of the Holy Spirit who will give you the words that you need in that time. To bring them and to be a witness for God and to that person. That Christ is real. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we ask that you would make our lives a reflection of the love that you have given us and shown for us and for your death and for your resurrection. Help us to honor and to glorify you in the way that we live our lives so that we may be witnesses to the truth of your resurrection. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in the truth of Christ. Amen.
invite the church to please stand for the prayers of the church. In our prayers this week, we give a prayer of thanks and praise uh, for Darlene uh, Klein's successful heart surgery, and we continue to remember Nadine Walker and Alice Meyer, who both remain in hospice care. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray for all people according to their needs and for the whole church of God. Lord, in your mercy. Father, thank you for showing us the importance of the resurrection of Jesus. Father, please help us to faithfully live our lives testifying to the truth of Christ's resurrection. Please help us to be faithful witnesses to your truth. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, thank you for being the first fruit of the resurrection. Thank you for teaching us about your resurrection and the everlasting life we have in you. Please help us to share the truth of your resurrection with all of our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Spirit, as you do your work in us, we ask for your touch both in body and soul. Lord, we give a prayer of thanksgiving for Darlene, whose heart valve surgery was successful this week. For Nadine Walker and Alice Meyer, who we've entrusted to you, who remain in hospice care. Lord, in your mercy. For the winter weather around the country and all those who have lost power or homes due to the storms. For the crisis over Ukraine and the humanitarian crisis at our southern border. For several unspoken prayer requests for your dear children. Lord, in your mercy. For the sick, the elderly, the widowed, the imprisoned, and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. For the underemployed, the unemployed, the homeless, and all those affected by poverty. For our troops, our police, our firefighters, and all those who put themselves in harm's way to protect us so we may freely worship you in this place without fear of retribution. Lord, in your mercy. For all these things and whatever else you know that we need, Grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the offerings, and at this time I invite the ushers and the acolytes forward.
Congregation, please stand. Let us pray. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. And the same way also after supper, he took the cup, and when he had blessed it and given thanks, he said, Take and drink of it, all of you. This cup is a New Testament is my shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. As often as you eat this body and drink this blood, this do in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us pray. Gracious Savior, you have opened your table for me to eat and drink your holy body and blood. As I receive this holy sacrament, look down on me with your grace and favor to strengthen and nourish my faith in you. I ask this in all your holy and precious name. Amen. Congregation may be seated.
Congregation, please stand. Now may this true body and blood strengthen and preserve you and keep you steadfast in the true faith of the resurrected Christ. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his everlasting peace and joy. Amen.
Congregation may be seated. Again, greetings with words of warm welcome. Joy unspeakable, faith unsinkable, love unstoppable, anything is possible, only in the truth of Christ's resurrection. Our final four, please, guys, first slide. So there's a big football game, in case you hadn't heard, later this evening. Pick up your pizza in the kitchen after education hour. And while you're here, just stick around, because after you do that, second slide, please, folks. Valentine's Day, Servant Project. The kids have been working really hard. They were here before me, and I was here a few minutes before 8 o'clock, and they were making pizzas. They're also serving lunch over in the school. So when you come in for dinner, stick around and have a bite of lunch over at the school because the kids are doing a servant project, making a lunch to help raise their funds so they can go to Texas. And then our third slide is our Concordia Sunday uh, Choir. We're having a pancake breakfast feed. So we're going to feed all of you plus the Concordia Choir, which leads me to our fourth slide, please, guys. We still need your help to house our choir members. So if you have an extra room with an extra bed in it, please call Katie or Diane and let them know that you have room and you're willing to house um, a choir member. And then our bonus announcement. If you are intending or planning to attend the Ignite auction, please register as soon as possible. Because if you don't, you might not get dinner. They need the registration as quickly as possible so they have the most accurate count so they know how much food to order. I pray that you were blessed by this morning's service and you'll spend a few moments in prayer. Amen. <laughs> 